Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Daryl Griffin with IEEE USA, and I want to thank you for joining today's presentation. We would like to make this presentation as interactive as possible, so we encourage you to use the chat pod located on the right-hand side of your screen to post questions or, com question or, questions or comments. Also, when posting, please remember to send those questions or comments to everyone so we can all be a part of the discussion. With that out of the way, I will turn it over to Amber Orr, our moderator. Uh, as you just heard, my name is Amber Orr, and uh, I'm a senior member of IEEE. Uh, if you have joined us today, you have probably already seen my bio, so I won't go any further into that. But as a member representative of the Careers and Professional Development Committee, I want to welcome you and thank you for joining us in the continuation of Observing IEEE Day and the week-long string of events that are available to you. Uh, we're glad you're here. Several of my professional colleagues and I would like to talk about who we are and what we have to offer. Um, as you probably already know, you are um, joining 170,000 or approximately 170,000 engineering, computing, and technology professionals, um, the world's largest technical professional organization. And today we're going to give you a brief overview of our career and professional development resources. And after that, we'd like to um, follow with an intera interactive discussion and get your feedback and ideas um, as our goal is to provide you with some tools and resources to help you succeed. But we can only really do that um, if we know what it is that uh, you do need and where what your goals are. Um, at this point, I would like to turn the discussion over to, to David Iams who is going to talk about a variety of webinars that we already do have available. And um, at this point, he will talk a little bit about himself first and then talk about those webinars. Hi, everybody. I'm David Imes. I am the Senior Manager for Career and Professional Development at IEEE USA. I work with Daryl and a lot, of, a lot of great staff at IEEE USA. So thanks for joining us. Um, so our webinar program has really been a great success, especially in the last two years, thanks in great part to our, our partnership with the communications team, as well as a, a really great um, career and professional development committee who's helped us bring a lot of great ideas to that event. And of course, Daryl, who is always out there getting us speakers. So thank you, Daryl. Our, our um, webinars and our events are designed to help you find a job, manage your career um, from start to finish. And also we do, do some other ones that have, we also like to strengthen your soft skills and tell you a little about what's going on with public policy that may affect you as well. Uh, this is a direct website link, IEEEUSA.org slash career slash webinars, where we have uh, a great many webinars on demand for you to view. And you can actually, if you're a member of the IEEE in the US, you can get PDHs for attending our webinars. Uh, first one I'd like to focus on is our finding a job webinars. Um, we all want a job. So uh, some great, some great um, titles include ones on LinkedIn, on uh, discovering who you are, your brand, and how to promote yourself. Um, we talk about interviewing, we talk about negotiations. We talk about how to get a job in, in, the, in government or how to, um, as the next webinar will show you, you know, top tactics um, for your career, for the future of work. This webinar is great because it shows you how to promote yourself, how to, um, how to strengthen your, your LinkedIn presence, how to strengthen your resume, how to make your resume that can be scanned by computers. A lot of the nuts and bolts of finding a job, maintain your career and your network. I highly recommend you check out this one by Aaron Irvin, which is one of our on-demand webinars. Um, it can teach you how to be an entrepreneur of your own career. How do, you, how do you approach the fact if you've lost your job, how do you find a job without having a job? Just some really great tips. Um, traditional job search tools, such as resumes, and LinkedIn's require you to be able to promote your accomplishments. Uh, there are many different um, resumes. Um, people have all different ideas on them, and they have all different ideas on how to do, how to make a strong and effective LinkedIn presence. 
I'd like to point out this one that we did this fall, resumes and land interviews, is particularly great because it shows a few different ways to create a res resume. We've also, um, we also have on our website some templates that can be used to get you started. We have two LinkedIn webinars we've done recently. LinkedIn is an extension of your resume, and in doing so, uh, in using a LinkedIn, it's essential that you promote who you are. It's great having two different people giving us a LinkedIn, um, their thoughts on LinkedIn, because everybody's got different opinions and you might grab, grab some great advice from both of them. So we're gonna keep doing some LinkedIn ones and probably some more resume ones as well. Um, finding a job, as I said, you have to take an inventory of your strengths. So we have got some great ones on branding, on finding out what you, um, what you bring to the table that's unique. Interviewing is the next step after you get that, after you, after they um, identify you. Interviewing is one of the most difficult things for people because you have to know how do you promote who you are, but how do you know if they're a good fit for you as well? What questions should be asked? What, what makes you, what makes this company a great fit for you? Um, you should be, you know, you can, there's, Having, having a company be a great fit for you is important. It's not just about getting the job, it's, it's enjoying what you're doing. Um, but negotiation, that's the one I have the most trouble with. Negotiation is, is great when you're finding a job and you wanna get your benefits, especially now with COVID afterwards, you might wanna negotiate for more time at home to work at home. You might wanna negotiate for more money. You might wanna have some more flexibility. How do you negotiate for what you deserve without pushing it too far? But negotiation does not end with finding a job. Negotiation is something you're gonna to have to have that skill and hone it throughout your career. So we've done a great negotiation webinar. I'm sure we'll do some more as well. Um, negotiation is part of soft skills. Um, soft skills are personal attributes that, that influence how you can work and interact with others. It's essential for teamwork. It's essential for leadership um, and just communicating um, communicating throughout your life. The most in-demand soft skills, according to LinkedIn, are communication, organization, teamwork, critical thinking, social skills, creativity, interpersonal communication, and adaptability. In many of our webinars, we, we look at, um, at soft skills. We have our critical thinking for engineers ones. We've done things on elevator pitches, uh, several on teamwork. We just had a teamwork-oriented um, webinar yesterday. If you didn't check that one out yet, it's on demand right now on our YouTube pages. Um, but we also go a step further. We talk about the engineering code of ethics or how to make the most of your one-on-ones. What do you do when your boss says, let's talk about what you accomplished this year? How do you handle that? How do you, um, how do you, how do you get your licensure, your PE, which professional engineering license? Um, but as I said, going backward, we all do things that are timely as well. We had several COVID specific webinars this past year, year and a half, where we talked about how to work from home and not be distracted, how to lead teams remotely, and how to diversify in our consulting practice as we recover from, from times of crisis. Uh, most recently, last month, we also had one about getting back to work and how do you manage remote and hybrid teams. That is one um, that gives case studies and the best practices you need to make the most effective and successful return to the office and maximize your competitive advantage in the most important resource, your people. This one is available on demand as well. And of course, you can get PDHs if you attend it, if you're in the US. Okay, back to you, Amber. Thank you, David. Be sure uh, to go to IEEE On Demand uh, to find these webinars. This is just a sampling of the webinars. There's many more. Don't forget about those PDHs being available. Um, and at this point now, we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn things back over to Daryl Griffin. Um, he's gonna talk to us about uh, the salary service that's uh, available to us, consultant webinars and licensure and registration. Daryl, you're muted. 
Thank you. I always do that. <laughs> uh, I guess I should introduce introduce myself a little bit more. I am Daryl Griffin with IEEE USA. I've been with IEEE USA for about 10 years now and have been working with David and Corey and a lot of great volunteers and look forward to working with more volunteers uh, in the future. Uh, the IEEE USA salary service consists of two main components. The annual IEEE USA salary survey, which is sent to all higher grade members in the US. The second component are products produced from the survey results, our annual IEEE USA salary and benefits report, and our signature IEEE USA salary calculator powered by a regression analysis. Uh, if you have specific questions on the IEEE USA salary, uh, salary service, you can ask me during the Q&A. I should point out that participation in our annual survey gives you free access to the IEEE USA salary calculator. So we really encourage everyone to participate every year. The survey goes out in the spring. We've been shooting for March uh, every year to go out. So we obviously just completed the 2021 one. So please look out for the 2022 one in March of 2022. Um, most of our members work in industry, government, private, or academia. However, there are members who have branched out on their own to become independent consultants. IEEE provides services to those members as well. The Alliance for, of IEEE Consultants Networks Coordinating Committee, or AICN for short, uh, main purpose is to foster growth of local consultant networks within IEEE sections. In addition, the AICN provides support to individual consultants that don't have access to local consultants networks. Our main, uh, over the past four years, uh, the main way the AICN has provided support to local consultants networks is through partnership in providing training to consultants directly in their local area. In fact, the AICN is partnering with the local network, with the local network in Minneapolis uh, to have an in-person training on October 23rd. If you're in the area and have interest in consulting, please consider attending. And I can obviously give anyone details on how to register for that event uh, in the Q&A portion. Other services that the AICN provides include, we publish a quarterly newsletter. How to subscribe to that newsletter is a little involved, but I can certainly give, uh, tell you how to do that uh, in the Q&A portion of our uh, presentation. The AICN also conducts an annual consultants fee survey and publishes the, publish the findings in a report annually. The 2020 report was just published last month. The AICN also manages the uh, IEEE USA Consultant Finder. This tool is designed to help independent consultants market their practice. For more information on these services, you can contact me directly or go to the IEEE USA website and hit consultant resources. In addition to those services, in addition to those services, the AICN also has a robust suite of webinars on different, uh, on different consulting topics. Uh, we have uh, webinars that address how to start a local network, how to find clients, how to set fees, uh, just a number of topics. We also have, have had two discussions from our uh, AICN committee members, uh, which we call Ask the Experts, and they've addressed uh, numerous uh, questions from members who have questions about going into consulting or being, being a consultant. Lastly, uh, I'd like to talk briefly about our IEEE USA Licensure and Registration Committee. The committee's main focus is to provide subject matter experts to the National Council of Examiner, Examiners for Engineering and Surveying, NCWS. The subject matter, the subject, these subject matter experts assist in writing the fundamental engineering, FE, and the professional engineering, PE, exams. The committee also assists in helping IEEE USA set policy and licensure, and we also try and keep the uh, IEEE membership abreast on any changes going on in NCWS exam, uh, exam procedures. Uh, that's it about what I have to talk to, and I can turn it directly back over to Amber. Again, if you have any questions directly about those topics, I will address them in the Q&A portion of our uh, presentation. Thank you, Daryl. Uh, next, uh, we would like to talk about um, uh, IEEE staff and how they work on a lot of initiatives. initiatives. Um, Corey Ruth is going to um, address specifically conference programs and services. And so I'd like to tur turn it over to Corey. He'll introduce um, himself, a little bit about himself and move on to those topics. Thank you very much, Amber. I uh, appreciate the kind introduction. 
As Amber mentioned, my name is Corey Roof. I'm with the IEEE USA Communications and Public Awareness uh, team. And I work with uh, Daryl and David and Russ and all of the other uh, parts of the IEEE USA team. But uh, specifically on the communications side, as, I, as she mentioned, I'm going to talk about a few of the things that, uh, that we offer and that you can take advantage of uh, if you're not already aware of them. So as you see on the screen here, one of the key things that we do is conferences. This can be anything from having a booth at uh, IEEE events that we sponsor, things like Rising Stars, SusTech, um, HST, those type of events. We also exhibit at select non-IEEE events, such as USA Science and Engineering Festival, AwesomeCon, DriveWorld, formerly uh, Maker Faire as well, although um, those events aren't happening. We're always looking for uh, exciting and, and relevant events to um, be a part of as well. And finally, we also do IEEE USA run conferences and events. So things like Evo, which we'll talk about here. If you've not joined us for the early, earlier Evo events, we've had in-person events, of course, before COVID. And then this year, taking on a virtual tack with that, we had uh, Evo 1.0 or Evo on campus, Evo Pro. Both of those are available on demand on our YouTube channel if you want to check those out. And then coming up November 3rd, we have Evo 2.0, our final virtual Evo event of, of this year. It's free and we bring thought leaders in the industry to share insights on tech trends, pathways to exciting and fulfilling careers and how you can take advantage of them. For the upcoming one, Evo 2.0, we're going to have sessions including a fireside chat with Nicole Bradford. She's the co-founder of Transformative Tech. And uh, that will be hosted by IEEE USA's Director of Communications, John Lee Glensky. We have a keynote that uh, the speaker will be announced shortly. And we'll end the evening with a panel featuring Amy Peck from Endeavor VR, Maxim Jago, who is a filmmaker and futurist, Jim, uh, James Finlay uh, for Workboard, and John will be hosting that one as well. For more info, if you want to register, find out more about the earlier EVOs, any of that, you can go to evoconference.org. Another big way that we support our members is with free ebooks and audiobooks. These cover a whole range of topics, uh, primarily in the career and policy area, but we've got some fun stuff as well. Uh, you'll see some of the images there in the bottom left of your screen. We've actually got two original engineering comic books uh, that are a lot of fun and been very well received. We've got engineering crossword puzzles as well on the fun side, but we've got some career focused stuff like critical thinking for engineers, engineering activities for the classroom, a lot of books, a whole series on women in engineering, um, a lot of really great stuff there and I encourage you to check those out. We've also got monthly and quarterly newsletters to keep you up to date on the latest coming from IEEE USA, where we're going to be at conferences, um, new ebooks, resources, that type of thing. And we've got our flagship online publication, Insight, that has articles with great career tips, uh, soft skills, policy, innovation. There's new articles coming on that every single week, so don't want to miss that. You can also follow us on social media. We are at IEEE USA on all five of those platforms mentioned there, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. All right, thanks, back to you, Amber. Okay, we're gonna hear from David Imes uh, briefly once more. Uh, we would re be remiss not to talk about our involvement with government relations. Uh, at least briefly, and so he's going to talk about that quickly. Although this um, this event is really focused on career and professional development and resources, finding a job, keeping a job, that sort of thing, our staff at IEEE USA is uh, a strong one with regards to government relations programs. Why we are the eyes, ears, and voice of technology professional in the United States, and we help shape policy. Um, 
some of our current initiatives are the broadband in, our, our broadband infrastructure, electrical grid resilience, NASA reauthorization and space policy. Um, we also look into um, making sure that there's a, the right funding in technology research. Uh, we place fellows within Congress, State Department, and the White House to help give sound policy advice, work directly with Congress, the executive branch, and the media, state, and local governments on behalf of IEEE members. We do things at the national and grassroots level. One thing um, led by Russ, um, Russ Harrison uh, has a webinar, just a half an hour, every other Thursday, 1 p.m., where he discusses what IEEE USA is doing um, um, and what Congress is doing and how IEEE is involved in helping, um, helping our profession. So I urge you to check out one of his webinars. We have a lot of them on demand right now on our website. But, you know, for the most timely, most timely information come every other week, the next one will happen on October 14th. Back to you, Amber. Thanks, David. And if you haven't been, uh, if you haven't sat in on Russ, one of Russ's updates, I highly encourage you to do so. It's it's great. Okay, um, let's go ahead and move on to our next slide. Our upcoming initiatives. So our our up, upcoming in, initiatives to to look forward to um, from from the careers and um, uh, our. Our Careers and Professional Development Committee um, definitely look forward to some local and te technical networking conferences. For instance, um, San Diego has an AI machine learning conference. Um, you can look forward to business and industry oriented webinars. Um, for instance, those FE, uh, so for those of you that aren't familiar, the fundamentals of engineering and uh, professional engineering topics. Uh, those hopefully you'll be seeing something to uh, for those of you that don't already have um, your your PEs th those sort of topics to help you um, attain that those um, that certification. Um, you'll see continued collaboration um, with Ada Kappa Nu, uh, the National Society of Black Engineers, the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, um, young professionals, etc. Uh, diversity and inclusion um, initiatives like the 50K Coalition. For those of you that don't know what that is, that's the plan to change public perception of engineering and encourage a diversified field of study, um, including more women and underserved groups. Um, and you might see in those last couple of bullets um, a bit of a theme here, a focus on um, underserved communities in the United States. And then um, your career as a business enterprise, that initiative. Um, the next slide here shows, uh, shows a visual on what that might look like. Uh, if you see yourself um, as a professional um, equated to a division in a business, um, this will help you visualize what that initiative might look like. It'll be a series of webinars developed to help you learn personally how to grow in each of these divisions if you visually visualize yourself as a business. So look forward to this initiative being released very soon and then it, it then each webinar will come out shortly thereafter. Uh, we hope that uh, you will look forward to that um, as, a, as each as an individual. Um, so leverage your IEEE membership for success. You can do this on multiple levels, um, both you know through networking, leadership, and volunteering. And and we we want to be here to help you, and we want to know how that we can serve you better. And that's where we're hoping at this point um, we can get some interaction from from you, whether that's right now through your questions, or um, we will, we actually have some contact information um, at the end of this. Um, presentation, there it is, um, and we would like to hear from you, uh, you know, through emails, through LinkedIn, however you'd like to reach out to us and, and hear how that we can, what we can grow also as a committee and provide you the information uh, that, that you need to continue to grow professionally. And at this point, I'd like to open it up 
um, to you as attendees and hopefully get some, um, some feedback from you. And also to the rest of our uh, colleagues here so that they can, um, if there's anything they would like to add at this point. David, if you want to take over as being the moderator, you can definitely do so. We actually had uh, two questions uh, so far. Um, uh, someone asked about the uh, slides. Uh, at, the, uh, in the, at the conclusion of this presentation, we'll be sending out uh, email with the slides attached to them. So if anyone is interested in getting the slides, they will, we will be sending them to you. And then there was another question about, uh, let me see here, um, asking about the okay. graphics and uh, copyright of the graphics, I believe, for these presentations. Uh, in terms of, if you want to use any of the presentations, the webinars for your for your uh, section meetings, your uh, local meetings, whatever, you can take them and do so. There's no copyright. We put that out there for local for local uh, for anyone any IEEE member to use to benefit other IEEE members. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so just so everybody knows, the graphics, like the ones that are behind Amber right now on the screen that were in the webinar, those are all created with um, no license required on those at all. Um, I don't believe, um, Corey, there's no, there are no license requirements for any of the, of the graphics you gave, right? People can use those freely? Correct, yeah. If anyone wants to uh, use those, like, like Daryl mentioned in their local section meetings or anything like that, uh, they're free to mm -hmm. do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as, as Daryl stated, we will be sending out, and, and Corey stated, we will be sending out the PowerPoint slides to everybody who attended the, who registered for today's event. If you have not registered and you're just joining us, you can certainly send me an email at d.imes at IEEE.org. The goal is to get, is to get it out there and um, share and let people know what we have to offer to help you with your career and and um, get people to start using the resources that are available to you. Um, although we have had some really great success and some really great um, audiences at our events, we could always do better. Um, now with regards to, and we also have, you know, I, I would be remiss to say we have a lot of great webinars that we're working on in the near future. We wanna work on some on storytelling, wanna work on some on, you know, maybe an elevator pitch one, um, just a lot of different, how to do a great presentation, how to write better, all the things that may help you with your career, but we'd love to hear what you're, what you wanted us to talk about. And so, you know, this is all about trying to, um, trying to give you what you need, even if you don't know what you need. Um, as far as, um, certifications, the PDHs, um, these are, these are actual, um, PDHs that are, that, um, professional development hours that are official PDHs. They're, um, one PDH is equal to 0.1 CEUs. Um, and we, they are held in what's called credential.net, accredible. And basically, if you receive a PDH from us, it is kept in a wallet that you have access to at any time that you can refer to and use um, in the future. So a lot of people use those to keep up their certifications and their PE licenses. And, and we do try to do ones on occasion that are specific to, let's say, ethics and other issues that people need. Um, I don't know if we have any other questions at all or anything else yeah, you'd like to say, Daryl? Jonathan oh. is asking um, a question in the Q&A. Can you see that one there, Daryl? Uh, actually, someone else just sent a question uh, to me privately, which I'm about to share with the whole group. Um, in terms of certifications, I, I, I know IEEE USA does not offer any formal certifications. I, I know some societies may, may do that, but I'm unaware of them. So I just wanted to elaborate on that. I just sent the question out. Someone asked about the IEEE Collaboratech platform. And David, that seems right up your alley. <laughs> and and I, will, um, I will look to get this other question out of the Q&A pod. Sure. Um, this may be something that, that you may need to contact me and I can put you in touch with the right person. But Collaboratech's been a great resource that's been growing. Um, we, we have a Collaboratech group. Um, it's the IEEE, U, IEEE Career Connect USA. And if you go to that site, you'll see all of our um, events. We post them on there. Uh, the, you know, the Collaboratech platform is a social media platform in a lot of ways, but there's also another component to it that's been used by some groups. And we actually have one as well which is called their workspaces, 
And workspaces are a great place for groups to collaborate. Um, for example, we're gonna start using one for our MOVE program. I don't know if you know about the MOVE initiative, but the MOVE initiative is, is a program that IEEE USA sponsors that helps engage our members. And we help, um, we help first responders in when there's a disaster. One of the things that they, they came to us looking for was space to put videos and to put files and to have a calendar, that sort of thing that's, that's a group calendar. If you set up a workspace, it's, what's interesting about it, it kind of works like a, like a Google Drive, but you, it has unlimited space for storage. And also you can upload files that are up to 10 gigs, apparently. So there's a lot of features of Collaboratech that are, have not been used fully, but it's a great um, resource for us to, to promote what we're doing internally. Yeah. I don't know if that yeah. answers your question. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And Dave, I can just elaborate a little bit. We've done two or three webinars on, um, on uh, Collaboratech explaining what it is and what it does. They're, they're older now, but I can certainly go back and get them if, so, if you want to email me directly about uh, what those webinars are. Yeah, and if you have specific questions, I can certainly find the answers for you or put you in touch with the right people. That is, that is part of an initiative that our Member and Geographics Activities Group puts together. And so I'm running to them a lot for questions as well. Yeah. With questions. Yeah. And David, uh, Jonathan asked a question. Uh, do you have any resources geared towards college students or looking, college students looking for jobs? Well, we have, we have a lot of resources. A lot of our webinars are for any, any level. Of course, the, you know, the finding a job one. We also promote, um, for example, there's a, um, if you look on our LinkedIn, our Collaborative page right now, whenever internships come available, we put those up there. Uh, we've got one that's actually, there's a deadline today at 5 p.m., so hurry up if you want that. <laughs> Oak Ridge National Laboratory for DOE. Um, but we, I think any of the interviewing ones, any of the resume ones, the LinkedIn ones, are all great resources um, that can be used um, for college students. We do work with, um, with other parts of IEEE to establish more, but we're always... The young professionals and students are a high priority for us. So we try to gear a lot of our webinars to them. But before we get to that point, I think what's really, this is more of a, of a Corey question because our, our um, EVO conferences are really geared and our future leader ones, if you go to our EVO conference um, website, you'll see a lot of videos online from a few years ago, some, some back as far as 2016 which are really geared to the student and young professional um, population. So I would really recommend you look at those. Um, out of the, our first 2016 one was a book called, um, a, a book about developing your path. It was finding your dream career. I think that's an excellent book as a kind of a, walks you through what you should look at. Um, you know, things may be changing with COVID, but it's a great book that I would highly recommend you download. We do have, we, the person, the author of it, John Collins has done a couple webinars for us, has done a webinar for us, in addition to being on a video for us. So I would check that, see it. Um, yeah, so that's, that's really what we have. Um, again, um, somebody, Ed Perkins just asked about updating the R6 website to reflect some of this material. Uh, the IEEE USA website does have an overview for such a page. There's a page, IEEE.org, slash discover, which kind of is a great compilation of all of these resources that we talked about today, including the government relations portion. So I think that's the great, great place to find all this information in one place. And then it'll branch off to the webinars and the, and the eBooks and, and that sort of thing. So that's kind of your one-stop shop. So check that page out, IEEEUSA.org slash discover. And you also see one of our videos that, uh, one of our really nice videos that our production team, our communications team put together, really talking about the benefits of IEEE USA. Corey, did you want to mention those at all? Um, sure, yeah. So as David mentioned, it's a series of videos that we put together uh, that focus on four different IEEE USA members telling their story, 
what gives uh, what makes the IEEE USA their competitive edge. And we've rolled those out in uh, an advertising campaign, initially in five cities over the fall and winter last year, and then in seven more cities this year, where we're really trying to get the message out about IEEE, about IEEE USA, and what this organization can do for, for members, helping them in their careers, uh, right from college to retirement and beyond. So definitely encourage um, anyone who's interested to check those out. You can see all of the versions of it on the IEEE USA YouTube page. And David, again, uh, keep following us on Collaboratech. Yeah, and David, I'll follow up real quick on Jonathan's uh, uh, question. Uh, I one of uh, our salary uh, survey products that we produce, we produce what we call an industry report uh, for young professionals. Uh, so. College, college students looking for uh, employment can access this particular report. It's actually for a fee, um, a, a minor fee that uh, people have to pay, but it is a detailed report of uh, young professionals and what their salary range is uh, in, in this in particular industry report. So that's another thing that we offer for uh, uh, college students looking for a job. Yeah, we're also strengthening our relationship with our Educational Activities Committee as well as um, our member and geographical activities, um, people as, as schools are reopening and as we go forward, especially now with IEEE Day and Education Week, I think this has been a great catalyst for us to really work more closely with other parts of IEEE. So you should be seeing more things in the future that are maybe cross-promoted um, and, and Amber's thankfully our liaison to that committee with the student activities. Yeah. And David, uh, we, we missed the question uh, earlier. Uh, someone asked a question, does IEEE have a peer review resume evaluation? Actually, we don't um, that I'm aware of. Um, I know that there's been peer reviewed resume um, activities at certain events, but we don't have one in particular. Possibly yes. that could be something that, you know, one of the, one of the strong points of, um, one of the points of Collaboratech, which is interesting, is they've got a mentor network and people may want to take advantage of that. You know, IEEE, because we're 170,000 members, the real strength of IEEE is the fact that there are a lot of people that we can call on to ask questions. And, and I would recommend that if you're an IEEE member and you're student or young professional, do whatever you can, get involved at the local level, meet people, ask them. It's, it's all about networking and hopefully once we're out of this pandemic, we can start doing our, what we call our ice cream socials, which are just social events, just to get people together to, um, to learn what we're doing. Um, so we're, you know, if you're in a different region, if you're in region three, think about Southeast Con. Region five, go to the, go to the region meeting and, and, at their events. A lot of these places are really great resources for a number of reasons, um, to network, to get ideas. And I think the hardest part sometimes in engineering is defining what direction you wanna go. Uh, Amber did a great presentation for Ada Kappa New recently, where she talked about the difference between working for a large organization versus a small organization, or what it's like to work in the power and engineering um, or the power and utility um, field. Things like that, those are invaluable um, lessons to learn that you don't always find in a book or on a resume. So just talk to people and network and take advantage of this huge, huge um, network we have. Uh, and also, we are going to encourage regions and, and sections when they do an event, think about doing things like a, like the, um, what, we, what Corey and I took advantage of, of our headshot sessions. A headshot session is an important tool to help you get a professional look on your resume. You can see the one that, that I did at Future Leaders Forum uh, on the screen right now and the one that Corey did at, um, at Evo 19. These are very helpful tools to help you stand out. Yeah, and David, David I'll add to that. I, I don't think you uh, probably emphasize yeah, enough. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I don't think you emphasize enough in terms of we don't have, we, we don't have a peer review resume thing, but I think that the two uh, webinars that Erin Urban did and her focus on what should be and what should not be in a resume is very insightful and well worth the time to go back and spend two hours watching both of those. Yeah, that was a tremendous, that was a tremendous webinar that I really highly recommend.
Yeah. That's the top tactics for for um, the future of work one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we, we have another question from Jonathan. He says, is there a way I can get timely news and upcoming IEEE USA events and resources coming out more available? I think that would be more of a Corey question. Yeah, nice? I would certainly encourage everyone to follow us on our social media channels. We're always posting the, the latest uh, coming down the pipeline for, for that, both in terms of events, new webinars, um, all that good stuff on there. And you can also sign up for our monthly um, Insight updates. If you go to insight.ieeeusa.org, uh, there's a subscribe button on there if you don't get those already. And uh, on that same page, you can get our quarterly conference updates. Uh, so any of the conferences that we're sponsoring or that we're running, uh, where you can find us. And uh, once we get back to in-person events, of course, uh, meet us in person and uh, ask us questions. So I uh, encourage anyone to uh, check out uh, all those resources. Yeah, and open your emails and don't unsubscribe from us too. Uh do we have any more questions? Uh, uh, we're waiting for questions. While we're waiting to see if anyone has any questions, uh, maybe uh, we can start uh, sort of uh, wrapping up, giving our final uh, summations. I'll start with you, David. Okay. Um, first of all, I wanna thank all the volunteers that are involved with helping us do what we need to do. This is a volunteer driven organization Amber is one of our strong volunteers, but there are plenty of other ones too, including Mark Torres, who's the Vice President of Career Member Services. He has been invaluable, has kind of just pushed me and Daryl and everybody to do the best we can because we have volunteers that, that really care and we really appreciate that and really makes our lives much easier to have people on board with us. Um, and that includes our John, 2020 John Meredith Award winner, Christopher Sanderson. He is the chair of our Career and Professional Development Committee. He, um, I first recognized him when Hurricane Harvey was coming through Houston and all the stuff that he was doing at the local level really stood out to me. And he has been, he's been, I've learned so much from Christopher on how to really engage with people and what, and what the members need. Um, Daryl, do you wanna talk about a, a few of your people? And, Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Obviously, obviously we want to thank uh, Christopher Wilson. Uh, he is the chair of the AIC, AINCC. Um, he has uh, been the chair for a year. He's been on the committee for about three years now, and he's done an excellent job in leading us. Like I said, he is, uh, he is spearheading us to get back into in-person training, which we'll be doing on October 3rd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, so we definitely appreciate his leadership. Also, Kai Chen, who has been a longtime member of the Licensure and Registration Committee, he has taken over as chair. Uh, unfortunately, during this time, the, uh, we uh, NC, uh, the license and registration has been a little slow because of the changes going on with COVID, but he's definitely going to be a strong leader with that committee as well. And Corey. And, and yeah, likewise, we'd it. like to thank Rob Weiss, uh, who is the chair of the IEEE USA Communications Committee, and has been heavily involved with a lot of the things we do, um, not just this year, but in the past as well. And our Vice President of Communications, Brendan Godfrey as well, uh, who's another very active, very involved volunteer. And uh, we thank him for everything he does as well. Yeah, I think I need to add him to this slide before I send it out to everybody. So thank you for, for mentioning that. Um, but it's not only the leaders, it's also the committee members. We have such a strong committee, um, uh, lo lots of strong volunteers from across the country. And they've been giving us great advice of what we should and shouldn't be doing. So thank you to all of them. But thank you to all of you for supporting what we do. And if and please, you know, give us your suggestions. We want to help you and we want to do everything we can to um, to make IEEE USA as valuable as possible. Yeah, right, great. Amber, did you have any uh, final words for us? Uh, I just wanted to make sure and recognize you all as well for um, for putting this together. Um, it took took a bit of work, and uh, I appreciate um, everyone that is is on this panel. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. You have any final words for us? 
Uh, just the final thing there, um, AJ had mentioned, uh, if I could repeat in chat, the Insight IEEE address, and that is, um, I put that in the chat there, insight.ieeeusa.org, or you can find the Insight button in the menu navigation on uh, the IEEE USA homepage. Uh, and uh, more resources there on IEEEUSA.org slash discover as uh, David had mentioned earlier. Yeah, cool. I think Insights linked there as well. <laughs> I think, I think so. Lot of yeah, places. lots so, of good places to get all the all the latest content. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to let you guys know that I'm going to be sending you these um, these slides, but we also have some backup information, which is basically all the webinars we've done for the last two years, um, with links that you can use however you want to use them. Um, as well as we have uh, mention of all the ebooks for 2021 and all the audiobooks for 2021. So take a look through those. If there's anything that strikes you, it, I put in a nice convenient package for you to just not even have to go anywhere and use and share. So thank you guys and happy IEEE Day slash IEEE Education Week soft launch. And if you're in the IEEE USA office, happy customer service week. Yeah, thank you so much. And I don't think I need to add anything to that. Thank, I don't see any other questions. Uh, Brendan, we wanna thank you very much for your compliment. Uh, and uh, again, Dave, if you could put our information back up real quick uh, regarding uh, our contact information, uh, you can reach us, uh, either, either staff or either Amber, if you have any questions that may pop up after this presentation. We thank you so much for attending and uh, that's about it. See y'all later. And we will have this recording Thanks, as soon as possible. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.